Hello friends, I'm Reza Rat from Radacat. Many of us these days are using some sorts of generative AI applications such as ChatGPT, Copilot, DeepSeek. Within the Power BI environment, we also have a Copilot option, which you may want to use it, but you don't know how to use it. What are the licensing requirements for it? So in this video, I'm going to talk about what license you will need for that. How do you set up the environment to use Copilot within Power BI? Really simply, let's jump into this topic. Copilot inside Power BI Desktop enables us to do a lot of interesting things. We can go and create reports and visuals using this. Uh, it helps us to analyze the semantic model that we have and might come with some suggested ideas of the reports. Uh, it can also help us to write our tax measures. It helps us in many ways as a Power BI developer. Uh, we normally like to use this, but how does it work? Let me jump into Power BI Desktop. When we are within Power BI Desktop environment, as you can see it right now over here, uh, we will see this Copilot icon on the top right corner. If this is the first time you are using Copilot, uh, when you click on it, you'll see a message saying that assign your workspace to uh, assign this solution or um, this, let's say, experience to a workspace, something similar to this. And when you go and choose a workspace, um, it might accept it or it may not. In my case, it does not accept and I'll explain why. To use Copilot within Power BI, you need a specific license. The license that you would need for a Copilot is what we call as a fabric capacity license, or it can be a premium Power BI license as well. Fabric capacity license is a license that you go and purchase from Azure portal, then you go and associate your workspace with that fabric license. Same with the Power BI capacity license. When you go and purchase a premium capacity license, you'll go and associate it with the Power BI workspace that you have. The premium Power BI um, capacity is going to be deprecated in a couple of years. Um, so these days, mostly if you are going to purchase a capacity, it would be a fabric capacity. Fabric capacities can vary between from F2 all the way to like F64, a lot higher capacity versions. The more you pay, the better capacity you get, meaning that the better set of resources, CPU power and memory you will get. I have a full video expl explaining what are the fabric capacities, what are the fabric licensing. So I'm not going to talk about their costs, prices, and things like that, but what I'm going to talk about is how you can set this up. If you want to use it, in my case, if I want to use it, I can go to the Azure portal. Now here, I am within the Azure portal. Normally, this is something that an IT admin or network admin in your organization would do. They will go to the Microsoft Fabric. They will create a new Fabric resource. Now, I'm not going to build that entirely from scratch, but I'll show you the process. They'll choose the subscription they want to build this on, and they'll go and choose the size that they want to build. The prices that you see here are New Zealand dollar pricing, um, depending on your country and currency and region, this might be different. For something um, uh, like Copilot, you don't need a specific layer of SKU. There used to be time that Copilot was only available in F64 or higher. These days, there is no limitation like that. You can even do it with F2. So once you go and select, or once your admin go and select this capacity, and then they'll start this capacity. Now, what I have is I already have a fabric capacity available um, and I'm going to just resume this capacity because I can turn it off and on. This is one of the good things about if SKUs available, whereas RI, reserved instance SKUs, are not, just, are not like that. They are on a yearly contract, but cheaper pricing. Again, more information about licensing is in a separate video. So I would resume this uh, capacity, which is a F2 capacity. As you can see here, the minimum capacity possible that we can have 
for uh, Fabric. So I'll start this capacity. After the configuration within Azure portal and having the Fabric capacity purchased and enabled, now it is time within Power BI environment to assign it to a workspace. As a Fabric capacity admin, you can go to the admin portal, which you can access it through settings, admin portal. Under the admin portal, there is a section for capacity settings. Here is a place that you would see Power BI premium settings, uh, as well as Fabric capacity. When you, hold, when you head over to the Fabric capacity section, you would be able to see the capacity that you are admin of. Uh, and then by clicking on it, uh, there are lots of configuration. The last configuration here is the workspaces assigned to this capacity. When you click on it, then you can go and say assign workspaces and then search for a particular workspace you want to assign here. Type the name of that workspace, assign it with that workspace. Uh, the workspaces that are within a capacity, premium capacity or fabric capacity, one way to um, recognize them is when you click on workspaces you should see some of the workspaces with this uh, diamond icon these are capacity based workspaces but if you see a diamond icon with a little uh, avatar icon person beside it that is premium per user capacity which is not just by itself enough to um, to do the copilot. Copilot is only available for capacity based licenses such as fabric capacity or premium capacity. There is a way to have copilot also with Paria Pro accounts or PPU that is called fabric capacity copi fabric copilot capacity. It is something that I'll discuss in another video. Usually for that you'll still purchase the capacity but you associate your users wherever they go and use Power BI, Copilot in Power BI, they are consuming that capacity, so their billing will be under that capacity. So you would still need that fabric capacity for that setup. Anyway, here after you set up your capacity and assign it to a workspace, which you can actually also see it within that workspace when you go to workspace setting, under the license info, this is a place that you normally see that is it a fabric capacity license or not um, you can even go under the edit if it is fabric capacity or premium capacity you should see it here so it would be either this option or this option uh, and this now means that your capacity is good enough for you to go and use for power bi so now within power bi desktop environment when you click on that copilot one more time and you say select a workspace, you can choose any of the workspaces that has fabric capacity enabled, uh, associated with it once you select it, then Copilot will be enabled for you. You can go and use it. It helps in three different ways. It helps you to create report pages, visuals, or you can ask questions about your data that is based on your model. Now I'm going to open a Power BI file that has already uh, some data in the semantic model because that way we can see it easier. So I'll open this Power BI file, which is a simple file. It has a sales table, product table, and customer table. And it is within a workspace associated with the fabric capacity. So I can actually use Copilot with this environment waiting a little bit for the file to be loaded. Uh, one of the other things while this is getting loaded is that for Fabric Capa for Copilot to work, not all regions, not all Azure regions still support Copilot. So you have to check the list of regions and make sure that is the region you are trying to work uh, supporting that uh, Copilot function or not. The other thing is that in the tenant settings, there is also some copilot configuration that even though if you go and connect it to a copilot, to a fabric capacity, you may not still be able to use it because the admin might have turned that off. I'm going to show you that. So this is the model that I talked about. I'll go to the copilot section because it is associated with that uh, workspace. It is going to pop up over here. I'm going to just choose some simple uh, scenarios. 
Here, for example, I would say suggest content for this report page. You see I have customer table, product table, and sales table. So this is going to actually come up with some suggestions. It will scan my model, relationships, tables, fields, um, even the descriptions within the fields. If you have synonyms defined within that, it is going to scan all of those. I have another video explaining why synonyms are important. Uh, and it comes with some suggestions. It tells me that we can create sales performance overview, customer demographic analysis. I like that. I'd say let's create this. So we are going to create a customer demographic analysis report. It is going to use the existing model, the existing tables, the relationships based on that. It is going to create few visuals um, that gives me analysis of the customer's data, their demographic which is what you see here. I have um, count of customers, uh, average customers yearly income, their graduate degree or graduation education level, uh, by the number of cars that they have, by their age group, all of these is created just like that. I can continue and ask more questions, but let's also go and say create a sales performance overview as another page. Now I'm just using this to create pages, but you can do tons of things with Copilot. This video is not about type of questions you can ask from the Copilot. It is just showing you how I enabled the environment to use the Copilot. So you see that I have created two simple report pages using this Copilot. And the reason I did that was that I associated my workspace to a, co to a fabric capacity and I selected that workspace here. One last thing that I mentioned to you is that the tenant admin have the ability to turn off or turn on the copilot functionality. This is within fabric portal, setting admin portal, tenant settings is all the settings that you enable or disable within your organization. Here if I search for copilot, I'll find a lot of Copilot related functions. For example, here you can see that uh, I can enable or disable users to go and use uh, Copilot. If I disable this, even if we have that workspace associated with Copilot users won't be able to use it. Or for example, you might want to say um, different parts of it, like do you want the data to be sent to OpenAI or not. So um, in order to use the Copilot, most of these should be enabled. The last three are related to Fabric Copilot capacity. The other one that I mentioned that you purchase the capacity, you associate users with that capacity, you'll go and enable this, then even users can go and use Copilot for Power BI reports that are in Power BI Pro workspaces. They can still use that because their usage would be under the billing of the fabric capacity that you set up separately. So I hope this video helped you to understand how to use Copilot uh, within Power BI, how to set up that environment. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos about Microsoft Fabric, Power BI, Copilot. Until the next video, bye.